their mission. Well, you've got to back up a little bit here. And, um, Russ, can you pull up these verses for me real quick? Luke chapter 10, verse 9. Luke chapter 10, verse 9. Because even though there's a lot of other words that are going around here as Jesus is sending out to 20, uh, 72, here he says this, verse 9. Heal the sick who are there. He's working on it. He'll get it up there. I'll read it for you, but I want you to look at it too. Heal the sick. So you got these 72 going out with this mission. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. So as the 72 went out and those who were sick with demon possession or some kind of physical illness and the 72 had power and authority over that, the end of the mission was not healing the sick even though they healed the sick. The end mission was what Jesus said, and tell them. You need to speak something to them. And what is the message? The kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of God is coming, and that, that whole idea of that is, not only is the kingdom of God coming, but you need to be in it. All right, let's go on down to verse 13. As there will be some who will not receive this message, and Jesus warns them. And he reminds them of cities like Chorazin and Bethsaida, who didn't respond to the message. He says, For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented a long time ago. So, here's the mission. You're supposed to go, and yeah, you're supposed to work miracles, and you're supposed to do these actions that will bring people to listen that you have a message and that is the message of repenting and coming to the kingdom of God. Now you have fulfilled your mission. It's not just this act over here. It's the end. And we got people into the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus says, however, yes, it is awesome to see the power of light against the power of darkness. It is awesome. When have you seen it? You need to see it. You've been commissioned by God with that power in the name of Jesus to come against it. But here's what's even more remarkable. Here's what we need to rejoice about. That you have somehow participated in bringing people into the kingdom of heaven. That's even more rejoiceful. That's going to last for eternity. Even if you had the power to raise a dead guy. That would be really awesome, wouldn't it? It's not as awesome if you can get that dead guy to live eternally. Because even Lazarus who was raised from the dead. He went on to die a regular death. You realize that? He wasn't so much resurrected as he was revived to go on to die again. There are those who are looking around at Lazarus saying, man, Lazarus, you're a lucky dude. You were dead in the tomb for four days. You were stinking to high heaven. But now you're alive. If I was Lazarus, I'd say, well, I'm glad I could do it for the Lord, but you know, I just soon <laughs> stayed in heaven. There's something greater than just raising people from the dead or causing the blind to see or um, making the lame walk. And that's to participate in making sure they are going to heaven. And so Jesus says, however, here's the real key. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Miracles and various actions like that and good deeds and and feeding the poor, and, you know, clothing the naked, ultimately should lead to salvation and change a life. And, and Jesus was concerned that they would lose their focus and, and, and focus on something else. We should get joy when we know we've participated in helping someone who was not going to heaven, and we know now they are going to heaven. Amen. That's where we ought to find our joy. And what's neat is when, here, here, here's the, the one, two thing, because that's the cake. Here's the icing part about it, though. What's cool is when we truly get on a path to do that kind of work, because that is the same thing as what these guys did, because we'll come up against the kingdom of darkness now. It's much easier to sit over here in the light and enjoy our fellowship and not do anything. The trouble with that is, eventually that light will go out, because we have to have an outward mission. An outward focus. And, and here's, here, here, here's the deal. 
when we are engaged in this common battle and we're coming back on Sunday and we're battered and bruised because you know we've been in battle in the kingdom against the kingdom of darkness and we come here together, we'll have a special bond. Then we'll become a fellowship that is truly sharing and doing life together. Man, that's the icing on the cake. I was, uh, have you ever looked at these satellite pictures? Uh, you know, you can get on a Google map and you can look, you can look down, you can turn on a satellite, and you look down like into your backyard. It's just amazing. Any of you guys ever seen those? Anybody done those? That is so cool. And so um, Russell, who re- he, he's one of the three of our kids who remembered living in Germany. He pulled up the, the Germany map. and It was so cool because we could look right in Germany and look right where we lived in the little playground down below and the school where Russ went to and stuff. And that was neat. And it brought back a lot of memories of being a part of a fellowship that was really involved. In battling the kingdom of darkness. Man, was that, those were great times. We warred together. And we had a fellowship that was like a real family. And the love that we had ran really deep. I mean, we would have Bible studies uh, with people who were not going to heaven. And, you know, we'd end up baptizing them at 2 o'clock in the morning. And we'd have to be up at 5 in the morning to go to work. Those were some great times. And, you know, I just miss them, those kind of times. Where we're really not just doing church programs, you know. But we're engaged in the business of bringing people into the kingdom of heaven. That's awesome times, and I hope and pray that we at New Song, that you will experience those things. And whether it's through the means of digging wells in Kenya, teaching kids on Sunday morning, uh, at the fireproof thing, whatever it is, working at the Connections Life Group, working with the youth program, this church has left a building thing, uh, whatever it is, let's not lose our focus. And this morning I want to ask you, is your name written in the book of heaven? Is your name written in the book of heaven? Will you spend eternity with God? I got to confess, if we've not led you to the point where you can make a decision to obey Jesus, to submit to Him as Lord and Savior, to receive Him as your Savior, then I have failed, and we have failed collectively. But I hope right now we're, we're clear, we're on point, that no matter what else we do, ultimately it is we want you in a relationship with God, a good relationship with God. It can only be provided through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I want you to make sure you understand that. I want to make sure you understand that there's an invitation for you today and always. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Paul ta- tells us that if, you are, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Acts chapter 2. There was a bunch of people on the day of Pentecost as Peter preached that powerful sermon. So powerful that people were cut to the heart. And they asked the apostles, what should we do? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Please, understand everything that we do is to bring you into the kingdom of God. And it's a family. And as we continue to grow that family, we're all out battling. And we care about each other, and we love each other with a deep, profound love. We want, you be, we want you to be part of that family. We want you to join in a side-by-side doing this battle against the kingdom of darkness. If you haven't repented, if you haven't taken those steps towards faith in Jesus Christ, do it right now. We've got folks that will be down here praying for you. They'll pray for you. They'll take your confession. We'll work with you and set up a time where we can baptize you into Jesus Christ so you can be clothed with Christ. We hope that will happen for you today. But think about those folks next week that we're going to meet. 
It's not the end. We got to tell.